if if people if if sex work is legalized and people can go to just like a brothel like you can in like Amsterdam, there would be not a need for street prostitution like this. Um, I don't know if we want to bring up the uh, the article here. So just like talking about this, um, this this woman is Sarah Cruzan. Um, I originally heard about her on a, on a podcast called Ear Hustle, which is a, a podcast that uh, was. It's done in the uh, San Quentin prison in California. They have a media lab there, and and a journalist from NPR came in there and, and began working with inmates in there. And they made this this podcast. It's a really cool podcast. If anybody wants to check it out, this particular episode that features Sarah is called Dirty Water. And uh, so briefly here, uh, and you Sarah. Said it's called Earworm. Ear hustle. Ear hustle. Ear hustle. Yep. So uh, Sarah, uh, her story is um, she. Uh, basically was was raised in in a in a low income area uh, faced a lot of adversity and she was uh, roped into into sex work by an older abusive man that manipulated her and therefore she was sex trafficked um, as as a minor uh, sex worker um, and she was in this heavily abusive situation that uh, she was being uh, physically abused very severely one night and ended up taking the life of her for sex trafficker who was a, a 31 year old male with a with a heavy criminal history and was severely abusing her and so she was um was arrested and tried as an adult even though she was i believe 16 years old at the time um so she was she was tried as an adult and the big thing with her case too uh, was that for whatever reason, even though I think it's a miscarriage of justice, the judge did not allow the defense to talk about the fact that she was a minor or to talk about the fact that she was sex trafficked. Basically, the 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 judge made the trial as such that they just presented it as as a as a fight between lovers that ended up in somebody being killed, which is far from the truth. Um, and uh, the biggest thing here is is not saying that that Sarah Cruzan is a is a saint or a perfect person because she would not call herself that, but in that this is the kind of situation that can happen when we have a puritanistic society in which things that should be legal are not. You end up with these very messy situations. Now Sarah Cruzan. Um, went during her time in incarceration which i think she spent a total of about 16 to 17 years in prison she had been convicted as um for life is she became um she was a very um i guess you might call like a model prisoner um she was she was hard working uh she got an education and she started um becoming a uh activist for for uh, people's rights uh, within the incarceration and also has always maintained that that she faced a miscarriage of justice and at a, at a certain point she was granted parole by the california parole board now um during prison she got involved with this movement called restorative justice which is what she still does today as as a free woman um is the the concept of restorative justice is about um taking a look as as crime as as person to person so the way that that law exists right now is that the state is is taking punishment against a person now with restorative justice what you're essentially trying to do is um is to sit down two parties that are affected by crime um and and typically that means both the, both the victim and and the the um attacker or um the person committing the crime that they're accused of and um basically talking it out in, in, a, in a comfortable mediated environment with professionals and um trying to to figure out in which ways they can restore that ear hustle dirty water um podcast that i'm, I'm talking about sarah mediates a a conversation between a sex worker and the man that trafficked her and is just a very very powerful uh, discussion so the big point here is is to look up restorative justice um there are different groups across different states that are are pushing this uh it's a really really interesting uh, potential alternative to uh, to incarceration um and is uh, a way that we can look at to, to say that we need to basically treat as a society how we respond to crimes incredibly dif different because uh if you want to bring up that that photo not only is is incarceration generally speaking um not 
helpful on 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 both ends because you have potentially a life ruin the person that committed their crime another thing too is like you know we need to definitely look at, at prisoners as as people we have a tendency to look at them as very like other and there's a lot of, of stuff in society with that but also the victims they tend to what they tend to if you really talk to like victims of crimes a lot of times it doesn't really do them any favors that just somebody's in prison like maybe there's that little part but you know there's really that restorative piece missing and so i think that you know we should have this this criminal justice system that that is trying to restore ends on on both because generally there's damage on, on both sides um so this is just um this is a very very low estimate this this uh 62,300 uh, per year uh, the cost of incarceration that that's a low estimate that would be an inmate that is not a uh, a quote unquote a difficult inmate if you have an inmate that that gets into a lot of fights gets in the hospital a lot um requires a lot of like one on one attention that number can certainly shoot up uh but you know this is just a, a quick thing, California Prop uh, 47, just talking about that that $62,000 a year can either incarcerate one adult or to send nine adults to drug treatment. I know that this has been talked about a lot by, um, you know, people on, on RBN and people that are involved in the criminal justice thing. Um, the- RBN, Revolutionary Blackout Network, you right. can uh, find on YouTube and other platforms that we like them. Thanks. Um, so yeah, restorative justice is a big one. And and the last little little thing that I will talk about and, and just how much of an issue that we're dealing with the, our society's response to crime <clears throat> is the number one mental health treatment facility in this country. And by that, I mean the one facility that, that gives the most mental health care in this uh in in the world, and sorry, not in the world, in this country, is the Cook County Jail in Chicago, Illinois. The Cook County Jail is the number one provider of mental health care services in this country. Mm. And I think that that's 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 sad. 